الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونزلنا عليك الكتاب تبيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين صدق الله العظيم سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل لغدة من لساني يفقى وقولي ربي زدني إلما ربي زدنا إلما Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We return with this month's analysis of Islamic eschatological analysis of global events for the month of January 2015. Okay, so what do we have for this month's analysis? We have two main news that needs attention. Uh, one of which, the news that is of primary importance is about the death of Abdullah. The death of King Abdullah, the King of Saudi Arabia. And uh, we actually covered this on the day of the event itself, incident itself, on the day when Abdullah passed away. On 23rd of January 2015 this was so important for us uh, there are associated prophecies from the hadith statements of the Prophet Muhammad that's why we decided to, to deal with it straight away uh, about the arrival of Mahdi salam, Imam Mahdi salam, being associated with the death of Abdullah so this was done and so we will not repeat that analysis that's already there and this has already attracted the maximum hits, maximum views. So those of you who haven't already, you can watch that. We are not going to repeat that analysis. Besides this, the other main news throughout this month was about what has been since then referred to as the Charlie Hebdo affair. Now we want to have a detailed analysis about this Charlie Hebdo affair. Uh, we want to do that at the end of this session. Uh, but before that, like always, we would like to run through the month's news, uh, besides these two, there are reports about the ISIS, about the Boko Haram. Boko Haram has returned to the news uh, a number of times during this month, but we are not going to waste our time on ISIS and Boko Haram, but rather we want to focus our attention on the Charlie Hebdo affair, uh, which actually demands a detailed analysis. And so uh, let us first run through uh, January 1 to 31 of 2015. So on January 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, nothing happens. In fact, something happens on January 7, but then it's reported on January 8. So we come straight to January 8, where the Charlie Hebdo affair is reported for the first time, and it will continue for the next few days throughout the month, basically. So as I said, we'll return to this subject, but let us run through the news for all of the days Okay, after, December, after January 8, let's proceed with uh, January 9 onwards. Okay, so January 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We reach January 21. Uh, as we had said, we are not going to discuss about ISIS uh, in this month, in this month's analysis. Uh, it doesn't require much of an attention. Just to report, ISIS has, uh, just as it has done previously, held two more captives, this time two Japanese men, uh, Haruna Yokawa and Kenji Goto. And we had condemned in the past about the beheadings and we condemn their act of just, uh, just trying to repeat this incident again and again and again. So that's it about January 21. Okay, so January 8 to January 21, uh, besides this news about ISIS, uh, the Charlie Hebdo affair the news about it it's uh, repeated almost every day which we are going re going to return to just a little later uh, towards the end of this session january 22 23 and degree january 24 where we get the news about the death of abdullah the king of saudi arabia i mean he passed away on 23rd but it's reported in the newspapers on 24th so that's the news for 24th. We have already covered this. It's already, the lecture is already uploaded in a separate video. So you can watch that. Uh, probably you have already. So let's proceed. January 25 and we read 
the sad news of the death of i mean the execution by isis of uh, haruna yukawa one of the uh, japanese captives january 26 uh, nothing much january 27 uh, nothing uh, really uh, january 28 uh, isis threatens to kill another captive this time a jordan pilot january 30 january 31 and nothing much so let's uh, get back to our main discussion for this month the charlie hebdo affair okay to return to the subject of charlie hebdo the focal point of our discussion for this month we need to give you a brief background the background is charlie hebdo is a weekly newspaper or magazine whatever you call it it's a satirical it published cartoons caricatures of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in bad light maligning islam maligning uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then uh, the consequences of what happened, as reported in in the media, which is also in their control, is uh, two brothers, two Muslim brothers, they entered the Charlie Hebdo office and killed uh, some ten plus, some some twelve to thirteen people, the cartoonists and other staff of the Charlie Hebdo weekly newspaper. Now. About the Charlie Hebdo affair, the questions that are being raised are all the wrong questions. I mean, these are not the correct questions. The questions that are being raised and Muslims are finding it difficult to respond to such questions. In general, there have been good responses. So in general, Muslims are finding it difficult to respond to these questions. What they need to realize is the questions are wrong questions. For example, they're asking, do you what is your opinion about the muslims who killed the cartoonists right this is the question they're asking um, as if to suggest either you're with us or you are with the terrorists i mean we have heard this cry again and again and again and again uh, george w bush used it and so many people have used this uh, before him and after him uh, before him and since him so this is a wrong question to put things in perspective, let us discuss what is the core issue. Uh, they would want you to believe that they are standing for something, what they call freedom of expression or otherwise referred to as freedom of speech. That's the core issue. Now, does Islam have a scope for freedom of expression? Does Islam allow freedom of speech or does it not? This is also another question which is being asked again and again and again and again and Muslims are finding it difficult to answer such questions. And I have said clearly, uh, not all Muslims, there have been good responses to this question, but in general, uh, the Muslims are being, uh, uh, they are, they're shooting the questions at the Muslims and uh, they are becoming very apologetic uh, they don't know how to deal with the question how to answer such questions so we need to remember a few things when the west speaks about freedom of expression or freedom of speech or such similar terms uh, it's it's always it's always what they mean is that they have the freedom of expression freedom of speech but you don't have so whatever they want to say they can say and you can't object to it but when you can, but when you do want to say certain things, then you are not allowed to. That's their branding of freedom of expression or freedom of speech. Now, the issue about the freedom of expression or freedom of speech or freedom in general needs to be understood first before we are ready to even take the questions. Now, does Islam allow for freedom of expression freedom of speech freedom of of anything freedom in general yes it does yes it does that's one of the core principles of islam for example let us take you to the quran the quran says that if it were your lord's will then the whole world would be muslims if it were your lord's will the whole world would be muslims but then the whole world is not a muslim that means everyone is has a free will 
they have freedom which they exercise and they decide whether to remain Muslim or not. It also says in the Quran that La ikraha fi deen, there is no compulsion in religion. A freedom is given, a freedom of choice is given uh, to every individual, every person, every human being, to the people about the faith they want to follow, profess, believe in. So that's the freedom. It doesn't compel them to follow Islam. An Islamic state or what they uh, are just so terrorized about an Islamic super state, they are calling it the Islamic super state, a Khilafa, a Khilafa model, if it were a true Khilafa, I'm not talking about the ISIS model. We have made it clear, abundantly clear in our several analysis in the past that that's, it's a bogus Khilafa. It's not a caliphate. It's, it's, it's a Zionist caliphate, if you can call one. Uh, if you could call ISIS one. Okay, so a Khilafa or, a, or an Islamic state would be such in which every human being has the freedom to, to, to follow their own faith, freedom of belief, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of speech. But freedom, any freedom has to have certain limitations. I mean, uh, otherwise, what would result in is anarchy, a chaos, a disorder in the world. For example, I can't just uh, go out and kill someone. Okay, I have the freedom to kill, but then he has the freedom to live. He has a right to live. So I cannot exercise my freedom, whatever I feel like. No, that can't be done. There are things uh, which are there in principle, but there are limitations to that freedom. And this is applicable everywhere, in every religion, in every society, in every thought. This is, this is common. I can't do what I feel like if it, hurt, if it hurts or harms someone else. That's not allowed. And now this is not just unique to Islam. It's, it's, it's common to all religions, all thoughts, all societies. So this is the first basic Concept. For example, we have the statement of Umar Razilam Anhu, uh, one of the uh, greatest companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi He said that since when uh, did you enslave human beings when they were created free by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? So they are basically free agents who have freedom of thought, freedom of choice, freedom of expression, freedom of speech. Now, when the West speaks of freedom of expression, as I said, it's always, it's always that they have the right to say whatever they want to, but you are never, never, never allowed to say what you want to. For example, the Charlie Hebdo, I mean, this, 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 let us take the example of this uh, weekly itself. Uh, it published uh, certain comments uh, certain comments when Charles de Gaulle uh, passed away uh, long long time back the president of France he passed away and it made certain comments and then it had to I mean uh, I mean they had to apologize uh, I think even the editor was uh, uh, the editor either had to apologize or something something happened to that effect or he was removed so okay Next, the Charlie Hebdo, it's very careful uh, not to, not to use any statements or any, any form, not to use their, their magazine or, uh, or, or what should you call it, weekly, weekly newspaper. It has never ever used it to malign the Jews. Why? The, the editor himself answered this question because it would be politically incorrect. Do you see the double standards? Politically incorrect to malign the Jews. Politically incorrect to malign the Zionists. It's absolutely okay for them to malign Islam. This is the double standards. We need to understand the double standards before we are to address the issue okay, either you are with us or with them, let us know whom you are with. It's not, uh, it's, it's, it's an inappropriate question. Uh, if I were to give you an analogy, 
uh, is for example if i were to ask this question to someone is your brother out of jail now there is no answer to this question for example if you say yes my brother is out of jail that means your brother was in jail if you say no that means my brother is, your brother is still in jail so this is an invalid question you need to understand this an invalid question does not have an answer so please tell us or tell us are you with the terrorists so kill the cartoonists or you're with us with freedom of speech freedom of expression it's absolutely nonsense it's pure double standards for example let's not go back to charles de gaulle let's go back to sarkozy sarkozy nicolas sarkozy the former president just the just the previous president before frank west holland so he his son uh, he actually uh, married a jewish girl and to marry the jewish girl he he converted to judaism except the jewish faith uh, the charlie hebdo uh, did uh, post some comments to the effect that he will go a long way because they know that the Jews have a massive influence on society, even in France, even elsewhere, in the whole world, practically in the whole world. So if you are a Jew, then you'll actually go a long way. But then uh, Sine, I think that was his name, he had to apologize and uh, he was sacked and something to that effect happened. So whenever you're trying to, I mean, things like these, they don't the freedom of expression of freedom of speech france is actually saying freedom of expression freedom of speech but the same france does not give an absolute freedom to even charlie hebdo this is the point which you need to know which we need to know which the world needs to know uh, uh, moreover uh, what freedom of speech what freedom of expression are you talking about uh, there's a, a comedian a French comedian uh, happens to be black, but that, I mean, that I was going to say it doesn't matter, but it does matter to them. It hurts the white ego. Anyway, it's ir immaterial. So he made certain comments and then, then it was taken as offensive. You had to apologize. That's not accepted. So if you're speaking about freedom of expression, freedom of speech, that should be absolute because what you want to portray to the world is that you want absolute freedom of speech, absolute freedom of expression, but the absolute freedom of speech or expression does not exist. I want to say, I can call someone an idiot, but I can't call someone a bastard. That would be, that would be wrong. But an idiot, calling someone an idiot, that's fine. I mean, I mean, that may be fine. I mean, I mean, there are limits. That is the limit, but calling someone or uh, or passing derogatory remarks that's not allowed i mean idiot i mean it's it's not even a very harsh term the the television uh, it's called the idiot box and so not for nothing you watch the television and you just uh, you just uh, take it in take it in all the nonsensical information all the false information that is being fed you're being fed with you become an idiot. That's why they call it the idiot box or, or whatever reason they call it the idiot box. That's, that's a very good answer why it should be called an idiot box. And anyone who watches that idiot box becomes an idiot if he believes in whatever is being told to him. Uh, George Carlin, a, a comedian, he uh, made some very interesting remarks about this uh, information that is being fed. Mind control media control and these things these are some of the things that we need to know okay having set the background let us explore further what happened they say that two brothers two muslim brothers apparently uh, affiliated with the isis the al-qaeda stuff like these uh, they even managed so if they have a track record which is not good according to the french then how did they manage to fly to all the way to I think Syria, Iraq and come back, how are these things happening? And they were masked on the day of the event in which they supposedly or allegedly uh, killed 12 to 13 cartoonists and uh, staff of Charlie Hebdo. Uh, these two masked men, <coughs> the Kuwachi brothers, two Muslim brothers, uh, they were masked on the day when the incident of massacre or, or killing, whatever you want to call it, happened. 
and uh, they were actually going in a wrong building and they were redirected to the correct building that's what we know uh, that's what we uh, get to understand uh, from information and then this charlie hebdo office is heavily protected by gunned or armed policemen or it's it's heavily patrolled you just can't enter and they managed to enter the office premises and just wreak havoc managed to kill some 12 13 people is it possible and how were they traced this is the most interesting part of the story how were they traced that they were the kwachi brothers because they no one see as uh, saw them they were masked that's what they were so they apparently left their id card they left their id card in their getaway car i mean professional terrorists who are so who are who have planned the act to perfection and they have managed to break through the security of the charlie hebdo office are the idiots or are you idiots who want to believe in such news you're being fed with are the idiots that they will just leave their id and why will they carry their id in the first place so that the police can catch them so that they 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 can be known who is it who has done the crime the question is who has committed this is it another inside job and what about the mother of all inside jobs the 911 apparently mohammed atta how was he traced one of the 18 or 19 hijackers how was he traced his passport and some documents belonging to mohammed atta which survived the plane did not survive which apparently crashed into the twin towers it did not survive the buildings did not survive a piece of paper managed to survive in the debris in the debris so this is a pattern and how foolish can they be and they are not even foolish i mean people are just just feeding on to these news as truth as eternal truth so these people this is an inside job planned by them executed uh, to them just to just to ignite that 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 hatred against muslims and what does mahmud abbas do the president of palestine what does he do he goes and joins them in a march uh, and uh, marches with them in a show of solidarity for freedom of expression this is what he does has he got any sense what values are we talking about the french are speaking about values they know very well that they don't have any values it's all double standards it's continuous bashing and maligning islam and the creating this image okay so this happened and their muslims are intolerant so two muslims managed to kill now what do you say muslims did not kill i mean whether with those who killed uh, they were paid agents basically or they themselves did that i mean they paid the muslims are non muslims that's not the point that's besides the point it's they who did it it's they who did it now do you support the muslim brothers the kawachi brothers who killed them we don't support the killing but it's you who killed so there are two crimes that you have done you have published blasphemous cartoons and you have killed some innocent people there are two crimes which you have committed and both is upon you not upon some alleged muslim brothers managing to break through security and managing to kill uh, staff and cartoonists and editors and, and, and all sorts of things just it's too much to believe in all these stories come on make up better stories for us if you want to if you want us to believe make better stories okay now uh, who are those who have condemned this act let's just get to this point it's important for us okay obviously the president of france frank west holland will uh, uh, in france a number of important people will those are taken but then who has condemned this attack we have obama speaking against this we have narendra modi speaking against it the prime minister of india obama obviously the president of the united states we have angela merkel Uh, the german chancellor speaking on this we have uh, 
we have I mean we have Putin Vladimir Putin speaking against this now this is important this is important uh, we should not go overboard about Putin yes Putin is taking certain certain steps which is against the Zionist alliance but that's more or less it Putin has his own interests Putin has his own interests Putin yeah that's true that Putin is not an aggressor as the Zionist alliance is Russia is not an aggressor uh, as a, as the Zionist alliance of Israel America and Britain France is but then uh, these are some of the things which we need to keep in mind that the he is not as trustworthy as some people are thinking him to be he maintains good relationships with the israelis and with the hamas he wants to present himself as a very uh, balanced diplomatic leader who can actually uh, run or manage the affairs of the world so he has his own uh, he has his own interests he has his own ambitions yes there are steps which he is taking which actually restores the balance in the world there are things which he is doing which are uh, so to say positive we appreciate that but it's it doesn't make sense much of a sense to go gaga over putin because ultimately very few are they who really really understand the reality of the modern age so some things which we need to be careful about there are more questions about the charlie hebdo what about a blasphemy laws they will bring in this question as well blasphemy laws so islam is intolerant uh, they just want to execute they just want to deal uh, with other people barbarically ruthlessly uh, that's what they are good at that's what islam is all about what about blasphemy laws before we even speak about blasphemy laws let us try to ask the question who are the people who are raising the questions in the first place those who are raising the questions most of them are either of uh, either the zionists i mean the the jews but those jews who are zionists basically not the orthodox jews so to say and these questions are also being raised by those who are christians so let us go back to the scriptures of the jews and the christians to seek an answer about blasphemy or the ruling on blasphemy what does it say when we read the scriptures the bible uh, which is the common scripture i mean we include the old testament and the new testament and in the old testament we have the books of moses we have psalms of david we have other books as well and we have the new testament we have the gospels and some other books as well uh, we are not going to discuss about the structure of the bible today but then uh, in the old testament uh, the jewish mainly the, i mean the jewish uh, scripture in leviticus so god says the lord says to moses that anyone who blasphemeth shall be put to death so for blasphemy there is capital punishment death forget about the quran now forget about islam it's in your scriptures in the mosaic law in the in the in the bible in the torah in the torah the law is still there you can read it so that's how you deal and it says the congregation shall, shall stone him he who blasphemeth the congregation shall stone him so these this is in leviticus chapter number 24 verses 13 to 23 if you read you'll get the context now when jesus christ isa alayhi salam peace be upon him when he came when he came he did not repeal these laws he did not abrogate these laws remember the matthew the statement of matthew i mean the gospel of matthew chapter number 5 verse number 17 think not that i have come that i have come to destroy the law of the prophets i am not come to destroy but to fulfill so he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets but to fulfill and what does he say basically the, the theme runs i mean blasphemy uh, he did not abrogate the law of the torah uh, he continued it so for references you can have lots of references actually you can read it in matthew uh, you can uh, chapter number 12 
you can read it in uh, Mark chapter number 3 verse number 29, you can read it in Luke chapter number 12 verse number 10, etc. So these are some of the references in the New Testament of the Bible, the gospel that is. And then when we come to the Quran, uh, the Quran does not abrogate this law. Much of the laws in Islam is actually derived from the Mosaic law, the Sharia. The Torah was the Torah was a book of Sharia laws, do's and don'ts, commandments. So much of it in the Quran, it directly derives from the Mosaic law, the law of Moses, the law that was delivered by God unto Moses, and it does not. The Quran does not abrogate. So that is where the Quran gets uh, the law from. I mean, it has verses, but then the verses are not as strict as strict as uh, those in the Bible. And who are raising these questions? The Jews and the Christians. I mean, why don't you answer the question, what is, what is the ruling for blasphemy? Why don't you answer the question? Why do you ask? So the Muslim should throw the question back at them. What do you say? What is your opinion? Let us know your opinion first, then we'll answer our opinion. We'll, we'll give our opinion. So that's about blasphemy. Now, when it comes to Islam, uh, there are certain verses, as I said, obviously there are certain verses, but then it's not the way it is presented. For example, in one of the verses in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verses 57 to 61, if you read, it just says that uh, anyone who uh, is against Allah and his messenger, he is cursed. Now, they will quote this verse, they want to quote this verse, the critics of Islam and they want to suggest the cursed means the word cursed the cursed it means lana the word lana it means that uh, murdered I mean he is murdered it doesn't mean murdered in the first place and the, the other verse the other verses as well if, for example they will bring up the verse number uh, 23 of chapter 5 chapter 5 verse number 23 of Surah Maida that anyone who does mischief, then the prescribed punishments are there. Uh, what about those? So, what about those? But the verse preceding it, chapter number 5, verse number 32, it actually gives you the context. If anyone kills a human being, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. If anyone saves the life of a one person, of a single person, of one person, it is as though he has saved the life of the humanity. So this sets the background and then it says that anyone who does mischief, who does mischief, then the four prescribed punishments are mentioned. The four prescribed punishments are mentioned. This does not speak about blasphemy per se. It speaks about mischief. And uh, obviously the four punishments that are mentioned, it also includes death sentence, capital punishment that's there. You're not saying it's not there, but just compare the verses of the Bible and the verses of the Quran and I mean those who are asking the questions, they cannot answer themselves. I mean it's very clear. I mean freedom of expression, I mean you just can't, I mean the Pope made a statement that freedom of expression has or should have limitations. It's not absolute. I cannot do whatever I feel like. I cannot go. I mean this is what will happen. So why don't you say that they exercise their freedom, they exercise their freedom, whoever they were, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, irrespective of that, that's immaterial, that's besides the point. They exercise their freedom and they thought that this person or these persons, they deserved death and they killed him. And you want us to believe that these were Kuwashi brothers or whoever, uh, two Muslim men, and they did the act. And we can be pretty much sure, very much sure, in fact, Quite sure that it's your inside job, just as 9-11 was your inside job. It's you who have uh, murdered. I mean, this, this this happens again and again. This this You can do it. I mean, it's not a big deal for you anyway. So this is about blasphemy. I mean, we are trying to cover the different aspects and some of the questions uh, that uh, are being raised and that, are, that Muslims are finding it difficult to answer or respond to in a way that that uh, silences them, so to say. So let us recapitulate. I don't know if I've been able to cover it at sufficient length or not, 
let's just recap if i missed anything i'll remember and then give you that aspect as well for example freedom of speech or freedom of expression it's not absolute so a counterpoint can be raised that they exercise the freedom and they did what they did so this is not allowed so if this is not allowed i mean emotional and psychological hurt is more than the physical hurt i mean in extreme cases it leads to death but otherwise i'm saying this the the physical hurt can go the harm can go but the emotional and psychological harm and hurt is lasting long lasting you can't just manipulate with people's emotions for example the quran says that it's in surah an am chapter number 6 verse number 108 that do not abuse other gods gods other than allah for in the ignorance lest in their ignorance they will abuse they will abuse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will revile uh, the true god the same god the one god the one and only god the true god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same god of the jews the christians the muslims i mean i mean the the whole of humanity i mean whether you believe or do not believe it doesn't matter he is the one and only god that's it so that's it so so muslim the, the, the quran says that do not abuse other gods for in their ignorance they will abuse so as a matter of reciprocity as a matter of reciprocity you are not allowed to say things which are derogatory in nature i think we have made this point clear the second point was uh, about freedom of expression per se and we have elaborated uh, by citing some examples that this doesn't exist. Even Charlie Hebdo cannot exercise that freedom the way it wants to. It has, it, it does not, either it cannot or it does not. And that's the double standard we have to deal with. And the third point is about blasphemy laws and we have elaborated the origin of the blasphemy laws it's from the Bible, from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And this is continued in the Quran. And when we read the Quran, I have elaborated how it does not. It's not as harsh in terms of the law or the ruling as, as the Bible itself. And those who are asking the questions, if the question were to be uh, raised against them or it, it were to be asked of them they would find it difficult to answer and fourth so do you support the terrorists the muslims the muslim terrorists that's the point they want to drive in do you want to support the muslim terrorists and you don't have any answer what should you say it's a trap is your brother out of jail it's a trap i mean they are masters at posing those questions but isa alayhi salam they, they did that to isa alayhi salam as well but isa alayhi salam he answered in a way they were dumbfounded so we have to answer it in a way that they can be silenced they will have no they'll have no proper response to that after that so do you support it's not a question about you either you're with us or you you're with them we condemn both and we know you have done both you manipulate and uh, i mean i mean forget about all these people want to dress up people want to dress up Girls want to wear girls who want to uh, want to wear the hijab, the scarf, the head covering, and they're not allowed to in France. What's what, what the freedom of expression, what the freedom of choice, and what the freedom you're talking about? It doesn't make any sense. It's pure double standards that we have to witness. I think uh, we have dealt with at sufficient length. They don't have freedom of expression. The Charlie Hebrew itself doesn't have freedom of expression against the Jews, against the Zionists. Uh, when it tried to do make certain comments they had to uh, make apologies uh, they were removed from the office all sorts of things have happened i think uh, as a whole we have i hope we have been able to deal with the subject we have to we have been able to deal with the subject with justice and at sufficient details at sufficient details so we'll pick up other important topics as and when necessary inshallah at other times uh, just a comment before we close for this month's analysis. In our analysis about the death of Abdullah, we have received a lot of comments. Uh, I could have commented back, but I did not want to do that. Uh, these actually require elaborate responses. Uh, only the elaborate responses or lectures or sessions can do justice 
uh, to the topic. Uh, it cannot be just stated in a single sentence. For example, uh, I think uh, someone has requested that is there a is there a, a series on the Dajjal as well? That's been long planned. It's long awaited. We have plans to start that series inshallah very soon. There have been some comments about the Mahdi alayhi salam that uh, uh, I don't know whether to cover in this 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 session or not but let's just give it anyway if they read it or they hear it they'll benefit from it what i say is have some patience we want to deal with the subjects but then these are elaborate subjects it cannot be just given a response on 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 the youtube comment section it's not just a one-liner uh, there have been comments about the correct and the wrong conceptions of the mahdi alayhi salam and we are aware of that uh, some people have commented about that the Shia Mahdi is the Dajjal. Uh, we are aware of that. It's not that you have given us certain references as well. Uh, we are aware of those references and of other references as well. What I'd like to say is this, the Shia conception of the Mahdi. I think this was, I mean, nowhere did I try to make it that way in the, in the analysis on Abdullah. The Shia conception of the Mahdi is an exact replica of the concept of the Dajjal. This is this is clear from, I mean, I did not give a picture which opposes this at all uh, in my analysis on the death of Abdullah, not at all, not at all. So the sheer conception of the Mahdi, it's the same as the concept of the Dajjal. If those who have been confused they just need to have more patience before we actually want to start the entire series on the Dajjal inshallah very soon. Maybe this week itself, sometime this week itself. And it's going to be a long series. It's not going to be a one-off lecture. It's going to be a series of lecture. I'm not sure at this moment how long, how many sessions it would need. Maybe 10, maybe 20. I'm not sure at this moment. But it's a huge, huge effort um, yeah. ahead of us. So... Those comments, yeah, some of the comments are there, which, as I said, needs elaborate discussions and uh, we'll deal with them. Uh, we'll deal with them, inshallah. So for this, for now, uh, we are done with this analysis.